Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Twist Lighting TV. Tonight, we are pleased to have Mr. William Sidney Porter as our guest. People also call him O. Henry. Porter is best known for his twist endings and his short stories. Around Easter, there is a festival for him for fans that like his twist. Mr. Henry, welcome to our show. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good today, and you? Good. Now I can already tell our fans when to hear a little about your history before you became famous. Can you tell us when and where you were born, and a little bit about your family history? I was born on September 11, 1962, and my mom died of two beer cook from coughing <laughs> when I was three, so my child was pretty rough. And me and my brothers and my dad went to go live with my grandmother. Wow, that was some time ago. So your childhood was pretty rough, huh? But having a rough childhood must have made you the writer you are today, right? It is. I realized that I loved to read and I wanted to be a writer and write short stories. Obviously, you became very famous. What works are you best known for? Um, well, I wrote a story called Heart of Bless, 1907, and it was one of my favorites. Can you tell us a little bit about that story? Well, of course. It was about the 1930s and during the native Lewis Tater aspires to be the next great American Western writer, but then he travels to California. He's recruited by Burt Kessler, a Hollywood union manager, to star a series of low-rent Westerns. While on set, Lewis learns about the less glamorous aspects of the movie business while befriending an old stuntman, Howard Pike, and falling in love with a spirited, spirited young secretary, Miss Trout. Wow, that's fascinating. Did uh, that inspire other works? Yes, The Four Million was one of my greatest sto short stories. Those are s obviously some very intense feelings. Did those thoughts come from somewhere in your real life? Yes, it did, because a lot of those things went from my childhood. It affected me in so many ways. That's interesting. Now, is it true that you wrote most of your books for your daughter? That, yes, it is. I wanted her to get in a good school, and I wanted her to remember me. Now, that is truly fabulous. I just have to ask you this. What was your last story before your death? My last story was a short story. It was called The Last Lake, and a lot of people recommend it. Now, what caused your death, may I ask? I died in 1910 of diabetes when I was 48 years old. I was in New York City in my living room. I'd say some of my history had to do with it. I was buried in Riverside Cemetery in North Carolina, and people can visit my grave anytime they want. Well, hello, Henry. It was amazing to, amazing to talk to you tonight. And a lot of people thought you were great. Now, everyone, stay tuned for a look in the life of Stephen King.